morning, everybody. Going to take a look at some of the recent flea market finds. The dog's not included in the flea market finds. Uh, he's just hanging out with me today. That I picked up over the last several weeks. Pretty much everything you see here is going to be less than $10. Today, the focus is going to be primarily on the optics I've gotten recently. Uh, the first one up is a Haliscope Zoom 2400. Uh, this is kind of a an interesting scope. This one was made in the late 1970s, early to mid-1980s. And this tripod and this tripod were included for about $4. The tripod's actually a Corvette, uh, which were actually weren't known for making tripods. That was a Japanese company that was known for making um, binoculars. They made quality binoculars. Uh, this one, actually, the tripod works quite well. The scope itself works quite well, too. It's 8 to 32 power zoom, and it is very, very clear. Uh, it is a little bit too small to stargaze with. It's also a little bit too small. The zoom isn't great enough to be a good quality spotting scope. Uh, but people have used it as a spotting scope. I've read a little bit about it online. Uh, the back of this was actually... Well, you can take it off. This actually comes off. Ugh. And you can actually take that off and you can attach it to like an older style camera, like a 35mm camera. Uh, and you can use it as a super zoom lens. I don't have any plans on doing it that way. So that was the first tripod that came with it, was this Corvette. The second one is actually a tabletop tripod. Uh, this is actually a Bushnell tripod, vintage. Uh, this is an interesting one. This one has the side mount, which I guess was for a proprietary style of spotting scope that Bushnell made in the 50s and 60s. Uh, the threads do match, and it is the same size screw, so I actually did attach it to both. So I probably will use it as a spotting scope for small game, or just... I don't know, standard spying, something like that. Uh, again, uh, this was $4. This one is missing if you look one of the nuts. Actually, two of the nuts. It's supposed to have a little cap nut on the end of it. This one doesn't, but it'll take uh, probably $0.25 cents and a trip to Lowe's. And I'll just buy two hex nuts that'll attach to it, and that'll fix that problem. It does work well, fairly well without that. This one is actually a Bushnell Yardage Pro 450. Uh, this is actually a laser rangefinder. Uh, this one, when I got it, was covered in mud. I mean, covered in mud. Uh, so he only wanted a dollar for it. It also had a little bit of rust on the prongs for the uh, the 9-volt battery, the attachment prongs. Uh, so I just got a wire brush and cleaned it up and wiped it off. And uh, I did a lot of wipe work uh, with my uh, wife's kitchen rags, which I don't think she was real happy about, but I did wash them. Uh, and it does work fairly well. Um, out to about 350 yards. I don't think it'll go any farther than that. Uh, it says it's supposed to be good out to 450 yards, but it, about 352 yards is the farthest I've managed to get it. it. does come with a nice carrying case, and that was, like I said, I think that was a buck because it was covered in mud and there was some rust on it, and he didn't know if it worked or not. These are actually a lot of fun. This is actually a Tasco uh, 10 by 25 binoculars. This is the older style. Uh, Tasco has made this product in one capacity or another for, mm, I'd speculate, probably over 25 years. Uh, they are rubber armored. This one has the uh, camo rubber armoring that has been discontinued. You can still buy these if you look on Amazon. They're there. Uh, it has the parallax, ad parallax adjustment right there uh, that you can use for, um, you know, making sure that you're seeing one image instead of two because both of your eyes need to do what's called parallax adjusting. Um also has a good focus adjustment. Works really, really well. Um, not super heavy duty, even with the rubber armoring. This one isn't terrible. This one, uh, this was another dollar item that I got. Oh, heck, I don't know. Uh, about a week ago. Uh, I've used it. I know a lot of people that use these for bird watching. A lot of people that use these if they're small game hunting, which is what I plan on using it for. Uh, my grandfather actually had one that was identical to this that he used for probably over 20 years as a small game, uh, for small game hunting, just for spotting before he would uh, sight him in with a scope and shoot them. Worked fairly well. These are actually really, really interesting. If you can see that at the top, it says Marbles Gladstone. This is not an actually uh, actual Marbles Gladstone. Uh, this is actually a waterproof match holder. If you look, there's just a little piece of rubber on the top here. And if you look inside, these were these were another dollar. There's actually some waterproof matches there. <laughs> so I actually got this for a dollar. As you see, you screw it up 
and then you screw it tight, and that little piece of rubber on the top makes it airtight and watertight. Uh, technologically, this is actually pretty <laughs> pretty dated compared to some of the newer polymer style waterproof stuff you can you can buy. Uh, it also probably doesn't it, it probably condenses on the inside. You have water condensation, especially if it's cool or damp out, which is going to help your matches. But still, uh, a dollar for both of these. And I'm going to use this for the matches, and I'm going to put some fire starting material in this when I go camping. So, uh, just a couple of inexpensive optics and something else I found. Uh, all told, I think I spent less than $10 for all these items, and they all work fairly well. Uh, so, I'll see what I come up with next week. Thank you, and good luck.